up guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. Today we've got the whole family here um, for a fun video. We're going to talk about our keto tips and tricks. So each one of us is going to go around the table and give you a tip and a trick. But before we get into that, um, if you have not already hit that subscribe button, hit that button down below and turn on those notifications if you want to see more videos like this. And if you have a keto tip or trick, comment below with that. This way it helps as many people as possible. This video is sponsored by Love Good Fats. Real quick, we're going to give you a little taste test on these delicious bars. So the Love Good Fat bars are clean ingredients, one gram of sugar, seven grams of protein, 13 grams of fat, and um, a couple great flavors. A lot of them are just basically nuts with some chocolate and pretty simple. So use the link below if you want to order these. Um, we're going to do a taste test. I have peanut butter, chocolate, peanut butter chocolatey. I have salted caramel. And you have? I have dark chocolatey sea salt and almond. And she already tried some. <laughs> and if you can tell by how many you're missing, we like these them. have been very yummy. So we're going to go around and we'll just start with dad here. That's peanut chocolatey. Peanut chocolatey. Just break a little hunk off and do your honest review. Mm. Very peanutty. Lots of nuts. Give you a pic picture of the bar. The mm. chocolate's good. Mm. Real simple. No aftertaste. It's, it's good chewy. Yeah, no aftertaste. Thumbs up. Thumbs from up me. from you? Mm -hmm. You try it? Save some for me, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. mm. So good. Two thumbs up for me. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. I like that it's not sicky sweet. Yeah, it's very subtly it's sweet. It's like you nuts. can taste nuts. Mm -hmm. You can taste chocolate. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. I could use a little more salt on it. More salt? Yeah. Just <laughs> me know. All right, and you have the... What was this? The, this uh, was the salted caramel. Salted caramel. Speaking of salt. <laughs> Mm. My favorite. Much sweeter. Mm. I oh, bet yeah. you won't like it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's really good. It's good, but sweeter. I prefer it not so sweet. I like it that sweet. <clears throat> mm, that's good. I like my coffee sweet. <laughs> I'm more of a chocolate fan than a caramel fan, but that was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't buy that one, but I like the other ones. That one's my favorite so far. As you can see, three <laughs> left of this one, only one left of this <clears throat> one, and then you're going to do the chocolate one next. Yes. This is... Do um, you mind sharing those? <clears throat> dark chocolate, sea salt, and those. almond. Dark chocolatey, sea one. salt, and almond. I think she's going to grab the biggest one. <laughs> I got the well, biggest she, piece. Well, and I she's already had one. some, too. Oh, oh yeah. Those are my favorite. You're using lots of almonds. Fresh salt. You can taste everything individually. Mm -hmm. And no, not sicky sweet. That was good. Mm -hmm. I still think my favorite salted caramel. <laughs> mm -hmm. What one's your favorite? Peanut chocolatey. Peanut chocolatey. Mm -hmm. And what was your favorite? Dark chocolatey, sea salt, and almond. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? It's between... It's between the chewy, nutty chocolate and the... That's not just, a flavor. It's, it's not a flavor. peanut, peanut chocolate. Peanut chocolate. <laughs> pe I'm sorry, peanut chocolate. And the one we just had, dark, dark chocolate, sea, sea salt, salt, and almond. almond. I couldn't choose between the two of those. They're both equal. <laughs> so, these, I will say, but we've had a lot of bars. These ones are actually really good. So, I highly recommend them. So, and the next thing is, we're going to go through our keto tips and tricks, starting with mom. No? She's got a mouthful. <laughs> starting with dad. <laughs> what is your keto tip and what's your keto trick? Well, let's see. My keto tip is get your blender out and some cauliflower and make yourself some cauliflower mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, they're, I find that I like them better than mashed potatoes. Put a little gravy on there and you got yourself a meal to go with your uh, protein. <laughs> Or in other words, swap out cauliflower for everything rice and make it keto. That would be that would be a good. <laughs> He's not what yeah. he's saying. <laughs> That's how I interpret it. <laughs> and and also um, read those labels. You go and pick up a package of bacon. You got to look on the back right, 
First ingredient's pork, second ingredient, sugar. So, <laughs> yep, bad. So, we've, uh, we've even charged ahead and we've been making our own. We roast the, uh, the pork belly and take the slicer and slice it up and then we know what's in it. <laughs> yep. So, read the labels. That's read a huge, labels. huge mm -hmm. tip. Um, I guess I'll do next. Um, my... <laughs> All right. So, Can we do bloopers? <laughs> you know, I said bring it over here. <laughs> okay, so my easy keto trick would be take a normal recipe that has table sugar, regular white sugar, and replace it with a keto-proof sweetener like Lakanto, Swerve, uh, Lakanto's monk fruit. Um, Swerve, so delicious, and are there any other ones I'm missing? Stevia. Stevia. I would be, I would pick one of those three brands or types of sugar and just swap one for one. I guess Stevia is a little sweeter, so there's a conversion there. But regardless, you're going to want to just make that easy switch. We'll sometimes make it either a low carb or keto from what it, it was. Um, and my next... And um, you've got to experiment with your recipes because yes. they, they all have a little different taste. Yes. So it yep. could change... You may not like it made with one thing and, and you put monk fruit in it and it's like a whole new Right, recipe. that's a good point. So I keep I keep the Swerve in stock. I keep Lakanto, which is essentially monk fruit. Swerve is erythritol based. Um, so Delicious is a combination of erythritol and monk fruit. And then Stevia is just Stevia. So we're sometimes combining two and allulose, another good one lately. Because um, sometimes combining two makes the negative effects of Maybe it's cooling or bitter. It complements each other or offsets that. So I keep them all in stock. My favorite, though, is still the Canto, but I use them all um, for different reasons. So you have to experiment with what you like. And my second favorite trick, or I should say, of what I had the most successful with keto would be tracking my macros. I was eating for a, serve, a family of four as one serving size. If you don't know how much you're supposed to be eating every single day, how can you expect to lose weight? How can you expect to maintain it? And until you've tracked your macros like religiously and learned what proper serving sizes is again, only then you can stop tracking. So I, at the beginning of my journey, probably the first year and a half, I tracked every single macro. I'm at the point now where I've done it so many times that I can eyeball it. But when I start seeing the scale slow down, I know I got to track again because my serving size are getting a little generous. Yep. So track those macros. Your turn. Your my turn. turn. <laughs> well, my my tip is it's, it's a lifestyle, not a diet. So <clears throat> you can't go on and off. And uh, I mean, you can. I do. <laughs> But I but always, you also I always go back to it. You know, uh -huh. it's kind of my baseline instead of uh, something being outside of a baseline, and uh, you know, going back to keto, trying to uh, adjust. You know, if I gain weight or whatever. You know, um, keto is more the baseline rather than anything. Then my trick is stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Yeah, I drink a lot of water. So I'll add to that: stay hydrated in the fact that sometimes when you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. So if you stay hydrated, it does help yeah. those times where you get the false hunger a signal that you're just thirsty. So it does help me with portion size too. I think I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, behind this. Always hot photo bomber back here. <laughs> All right, mom, we'll stick with you. We'll end on you. Your keto tip and trick. My keto tip would be um, I like to plan my my menus out three to five days in advance. Well, everybody can do that. But my what I do personally is I don't label pork chops on Monday, chicken on Tuesday, you know, because on Monday I may not want pork chops, but if I look at my menu <clears throat> for the week, then I know that everything that's on that menu I already have in the house. So it all can be readily made or even switched up. But if I don't feel like pork chops on Monday and I feel like pizza on Monday, well, then I'll just make the pizza meal. I so you'll don't, switch like Monday yeah. for Thursday or something. Right, because right. if you label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's Wednesday and you don't want what's on there, um, you'll 
oftentimes say, well, let me just, let's just go out or let's get takeout or, I'm you not know. feeling burgers tonight. Right. So, yeah. and then that derails you. And once you derail, that sets the tone for the next couple of days. That's a really good tip. I never even mm -hmm. thought of it that way. So you know, you, once you derailed, it's really hard because you, you think, well, I only did it last night, so maybe I can do that tomorrow. And now you've got two days worth of food in the house and you've gone out for two days. So don't label your menu by the day. Just, I go one, two, three, four, five. How many days I'm planning out, it's one, two, three, four, five. And I stick it on my fridge. And I know that when I shop. It it off when you've done it. Yeah, because I, I am a little, yeah, I, I, I am, yes, a little OCD. So I'll cross it off. So I know that when I go to it, that one that's crossed off, every ingredient that's in that meal has already been used. So if I want to be like, we have what we call hobo skillet, usually one day a week, and that's everything that's in the fridge, gets put out and reinvented in like really crazy combinations, but it cleans out the fridge. And we don't so, waste food. And we don't waste any food. Yeah. <laughs> That's a blooper. That's a blooper. Oh my God. No. <laughs> Karen follows me. <laughs> and I, okay, so then my, that was my. <laughs> that was your tip. What's your trick? My trick is the scale. And I, you know, and what type of scale is that? Is that a kitchen scale this is or a bathroom kitchen, scale? This is a kitchen scale. I don't like bathroom scales. They need to be <laughs> far away from you once a month on those bugs. But I like my kitchen scale. And Why? Me, um, and if you've read, a couple of people have followed me on the on the Facebook page, and I've talked about this before. The first two years that I spent losing weight, every morsel was weighed. And then I kind of, you know, you figure you got it, you're at your goal weight, and you, you find that over a couple of weeks, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And um, you find all of a sudden that either you're feeling fuller, you may be a little more bloated, or the scale may be going up, and yet you've eaten everything on, on the program that you Why am I not losing yourself. weight? <laughs> exactly. And it's your portions have increased. So after the first couple of years where I had to weigh every single thing um, for several years and, and now periodically, I will spend a week a month, am I right? A week a month weighing everything because it like resets your eyes into the right, putting it in the right perspective. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that handful now really had, became two handfuls of something. So, you actually weigh it out. <clears throat> when you weigh it out. So I always, I do it still. I still like this scale. This is a useful tool. The scale you get on to weigh yourself is a nonsense tool. <laughs> this is a useful tool. To not all scales you. are bad. Not, what you're yeah, to say. not all scales are bad, but most of them are. But this one's a good scale because it, it also controls how you feel on the inside, not just you know, you want to make sure you're eating all. enough too. It's not only eating right. too much. Somebody doesn't eat all the protein. I know, I, and I, that's why I, I mostly <laughs> use this now to measure protein because I struggle with getting, getting your protein, protein in. You know how I much I like get, my protein. I, I don't even get, on a good day, I get 50% of my protein alone. And she's in trouble with me every single oh, day. Constantly. So. I've been yelled at now for about two weeks. <laughs> eat your protein. <laughs> so. so that's my trip, tick, trip. <laughs> Your My tip, tip and trick. Your keto tip and trick. Right. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see another video topic discussed by the four of us, also leave a comment below. And we will see you at the next video. I'm Jess. You're watching Keto Wine. And this is Table You're Talk. watching Keto Wine. Keto Wine. <laughs> keto Wine. It's the new channel, Keto <laughs> Wine. Keto Wine. <laughs> we need a bloopers page. <laughs> Keto Rewind. You're watching Keto Rewind. Rewind. And Rewind. Table talk. <laughs>